Hi everyone, today we will start short run production function with two variable inputs. In my previous video, I had already explained you short run production function with one variable input. That was labor only. And here is we are taking short run production function with two variable inputs. That is one is labor, another one is capital. So that is this kind of uh, relationship we would be able to explain with the help of isoquant. Isoquant means derived from quantity and the Greek word iso meaning equal. Iso means equal, quant means quantity, equal quantity. Is a contour line drawn to the set of points at which the same quantity of output is produced while changing the quantities of two or more inputs. Simply we are changing output with the help of two inputs quantity we are keep on changing. Isoquants typically show the technological trade-off between capital and labor in the production function and the decreasing marginal returns of both inputs. And here is we are adding one inputs while holding the other constantly, other constant eventually leads to decreasing marginal output. We will understand all these phenomena with the help of curve. A family of isoquant can be represented by an isoquant map. When more than one isoquant curve is there, this, this is, we can call it isoquant map. A graph combining a number of isoquants, each representing a different quantity of output. So one by one, we will understand isoquants are called equal product curve. We can see here on the y-axis we have taken, right, there is one there is one factor and another one is Wikipedia saying I have taken this curve. So this is the, from the, from the, from the, y, on the y-axis there is the one, this is the capital and on the l-axis, uh, on the x-axis that is labor. Then we come to the an isoquant map where is Q3 is greater than Q2 and Q2 is greater than Q1. More of input X, input Y or both is required to move from isoquant Q1 to Q2 or Q2 to Q3. You can see here, this is Q1, this is Q2, this is Q3. So here is more quantity of Q1, Q2 and Q3 means we are giving more inputs of x and as well as more input of y. It is on this curve, less input of, this one is the um, labor and uh, capital quantity, then is the more quantity at Q2 and Q3. Then we come to the types of isoquant. Types of isoquant, isoquant map with two inputs that are perfect substitutes. Let's say we are taking two substitutes. Let's say I am taking example of credit card and debit card, as I said earlier also. Or we can call it such kind of activity is going on when labor 100% can be replaced with the capital. So here is on x-axis we have taken labor, y-axis we have taken capital. So Q1 that means when either we are using in this combination, I am just taking my pen, then I would explain you. Either we are taking this one is the zero, quant all the quantity of capital and zero quantity of labor, right? Or we are taking 100% quantity of labor and zero quantity of capital. Or we are taking in the combination. You can see this much, this much of number of units of labor and this much of number of units of capital we are taking. And further is we can take it this much units of capital and this is the unit of labor. And so on, Q1, that means less number we are taking. But when we talk about at this point, Q2, we are taking more capital and more labor. And now you can see, this is the point where is we are taking equal number of labor. This is the quantity of capital and this is the quantity of, I mean, uh, units of labor. Then we come to the last one is, you can see, this is the, Yes, this one is Q3 and at this point Q3, this is the, we can say, quantity of the capital and quantity of labor. So, this is the perfect. Either we can take zero or we can take one unit of only 
one input and maximum units from another you another inputs then is isoquant map with two inputs that are that are perfect complement complement means as we know we understand complement means we are talking about let's say we are manufacturing one bicycle for one bicycle we require one chases and two tires for two bicycle when we are manufacturing we require two chases and two tires four tires three means three chases and six tires so that means they are perfect complements to each other without which production cannot be possible it's possible only when that is required in proportion so let's say if we are manufacturing bicycle so we require minimum one chases and two tires and in the same proportion if we would like to increase number of output in the same proportion we can increase so properties of the isoquant it is similar to indifference curve and indifference curve that is applicable on the goods consumer behavior but this one is isoquant that is applicable on the production side where is that is applicable to the factors of production so four factors of production land labor capital and entrepreneur so this is isoquant means here is we are taking only two factors those are variable in the short run and uh, this one is the properties of the isoquant are very similar to indifference curve now we can see one why one and isoquant slopes downward from left to right isoquants slopes downwards from left to right and this implies that isoquant is negatively sloped like a demand curve like demand curve is sloping downwards from left to right this is because when the quantify the factor of k k stands for capital is increased the quantity of a labor must reduce so to keep the same level of output so one particular input we are reducing and another input we are increasing let's come to the second point second property an isoquant that lies above to the right of the another represents a higher output level which one is on the higher side that curve it shows higher output level and that which one is the lower side that reflects lower output level third one is isoquant cannot cut each other isoquant never would intersect to each other fourth one is isoquants are convex to the origin means they it would be like that it will never be like that if that is the y axis and this is the x axis this is x axis and this is y axis so it would be like this because that is the convex and it will never be like that that would never be concave it would always be convex so this property implies that the marginal productivity of one factor in terms of another factor diminishes diminishes along an isoquant in other words the isoquants are convex to the origin due to that that is the one law that is applicable that is diminishing marginal rate of substitution as we are substituting and after that this one is reducing so this is the property and then isoquant line is also called outlay line or price line or factor cost line because that is within the budget so an isoquant because we cannot go beyond budget whatever is our budget within the budget we can have um we can have more labor and capital and we can reduce one so another one we can increase otherwise we could not be because if we are going beyond budget so it's not possible we can increase or we can increase number of labors or number of capital so an isoquant line isocost line shows all the combinations of labor and capital that are available for a given total cost to the producer the greater the total cost the further from origin is the cost isocost line this is the final curve we can see factor x we have taken factor y we have taken and now we can understand delta y divided by delta x equal to px divided by py so px stands for that one is the price of x factor and py price of 
y factor. And y factor, let's say, we are assuming that is capital and x factor we are assuming that is labor. And now we can see this is the our budget line or we can call it ISO cost line. I had already explained you outlay line, price line, factor cost line. So now we can see these are the lines. These are the that would vary. If that is producing, if we will talk about G and H factor cost line, that means we are producing more output. We, because we are giving more factor X and more factor Y and our budget is also very high. So now we can see because we are giving this much of capital and this much of our, we can call it is this much of our labor. So in that way, and that is the price that is, we can say total is 400. So I hope you understand what could be the relationship between price and factor. So delta Y divided by delta X, P X divided by P. So in the next video, we will discuss uh, return to scale or we can call it production function long run in the long run, long run production function with where all the factors are variable. Nothing is fixed like in the short run production function two or one variable is only variable rest of the factors are fixed but it's not like that in the long run production function and in the next video we will discuss long run production function so please stay tuned keep watching thank